Good morning, I'm Natalie with KQNK. Today is Friday, April 26th. Currently with fog, it is 55 degrees. The humidity is 94%. The wind speed is north at 5 miles per hour. The barometric pressure is 29.40. The dew point is 54 degrees. The wind chill is 54 degrees. And the current visibility is one quarter mile. It's 8.04 and time for Kansas News. Kansas Information Network News. I'm Jen Austin. Kansas City is home to some of the most affordable houses, according to new research. Brandon Dixon has more. Kansas City ranks 14th on Clever's list of the most affordable metro areas for home buyers. The local median price of a home is less than $291,000, and the annual mortgage payment on the median house is just over twenty-four grand. Pittsburgh had the cheapest homes among the 50 most populated metros, while St. Louis placed third. I'm Britton Dixon. An accountant in Colby has been accused of defrauding clients. The U.S. Attorney's Office said CPA Quentin Flanagan is accused of funneling more than $400,000 to a fake business called Middle Finger Ranch, and then he hired a construction company to build a house for him. Flanagan was hired by the owners of Diamond M Farms in Thomas County and transferred the money from Diamond M Farms accounts. Flanagan is the co-owner of a company called Williams Consulting. The FBI has been investigating the case. This is Kansas Information Network News. With today's inflation straining your budget, your Kansas Farm Bureau membership can help keep more money in your pocket. Get 15% off current published rates at Next Tech Wireless. Special member pricing on select Granger products. Save on vacation and travel with Avis Budget and Choice Hotels. And join the Kansans who've switched to Kansas Farm Bureau health plans, who enjoy significant savings on nationwide medical health care coverage. Join today. For a full list of benefits, visit kfb.org slash benefits. Hey, you got any gum? Yeah, check my backpack. What's this? Oh, that's naloxone. It can reverse an opioid overdose. I decided to always keep it on me after my friend almost died. It saved his life. Oh, wow. I'm so sorry. That makes me want to have it with me, too. You totally should. Check the pharmacy. It was actually really easy to get, and it's easy to use. I definitely will. Thanks. Naloxone saves lives. Learn more at cdc.gov. Good morning, I'm Natalie Hadley with your KQNK News, brought to you by Firebolt Ag, LLC, serving all of your chemical and fertilizer needs. As Kansas lawmakers are looking at the end of this year's legislative session, more than a dozen bills vetoed by Kansas Governor Laura Kelly could see override attempts, and those include a significant tax cut bill. While that tax cut bill has bipartisan support and tax cuts are a priority for both parties, Kelly's veto cites concerns about the long-term costs, so the governor pitched an alternative plan. The vetoed plan has a cost of about $1.5 billion over three years, with cuts to state income taxes, property taxes, Social Security income taxes, and an early end to the state's food sales tax. Now the question is whether the legislature will have the two-thirds majority in the House and Senate to overturn the veto. Based on the initial votes that passed the tax cut bill, the math to overturn the veto appears strong in the House, where it passed unanimously. However, it's more of an unknown in the Senate. Overall, Governor Kelly has vetoed 16 bills, 15 since lawmakers went on break earlier this month, and that total is one less than the high mark she set last year with 17 vetoes. In addition to the tax cut bills, Republican leadership could attempt to override abortion, election, gender-affirming care for minor bills, and line-item vetoes from the budget bill. The legislature also needs to complete other items before leaving, including the omnibus bill and the K-12 education budget. The state of Kansas has received $451.7 million to expand affordable and reliable high-speed Internet access. The federal funding comes from the Broadband Equity Access and Development Program, and the money can be used to create or upgrade high-speed Internet networks so everyone has access to the Internet. And once it's done, it can be used for training and workforce development. Governor Kelly said in a news release that Kansans, no matter their zip code, deserve access to reliable high-speed Internet, so the distribution of BEAD funds will break down the barriers that have prevented some from fully participating in a thriving digital economy. The BEAD program is a $42.45 billion state grant program, and the states were allocated funding to deploy or upgrade high-speed Internet networks to ensure that everyone has access to reliable, affordable high-speed Internet service. 
Two other states that received federal funding as well are Nevada, which received $416.6 million, and West Virginia, which received $1.2 billion. Governor Kelly recently signed legislation updating the state's workers' compensation system to place into law details of compromises negotiated by labor and business interests that were unanimously endorsed in the House and Senate. The legislation substantially increased the maximum compensation for injured workers or their dependents and added a cost-of-living adjustment to those benefits beginning in July 2027. Under Senate Bill 430, the parties would exchange medical records in a timely way, limit the use of independent medical examinations, and cases could be settled without a formal hearing. The bill that was sent to the governor in late March will also reduce a Social Security retirement offset for certain disability benefits and extend worker compensation coverage to members of the Kansas National Guard. Governor Kelly said the legislation is a win for Kansas's workforce, businesses, and organized labor. She said the reforms in the legislation will create a more just and efficient workers' compensation system that increases the benefits for injured workers while creating administrative efficiencies and maintaining stability for businesses. For the 17th consecutive year, Fort Hay State University has been recognized for the investment in programs that improve the lives of veterans and military personnel, earning the 2024-2025 Military Friendly School designation from MilitaryFriendly.com. Institutions that received the designation were evaluated using public data sources and responses from a proprietary survey. More than 2,600 schools participated in the 2023-2024 survey, with more than 500 schools earning award-level designations in gold, silver, and bronze. And Fort Hay State University attained the rank of silver again this year. The military-friendly program creates a civilian opportunities for veterans and is the standard that measures an organization's commitment, effort, and success in creating sustainable and meaningful opportunities for the military community. The 2024-2025 Military Friendly Schools list can be found at militaryfriendly.com. Military-connected students' benefits at Fort Hay State University includes tuition assistance, veteran affairs benefits, yellow ribbon and in-state tuition, and scholarships. Students also have access to a military success module, specialized career services, and a dedicated military admissions advisor. You can visit the Military Connected Student Services page for more information at fhsu.edu slash military. In Nebraska news, Nebraska Governor Pillen signed a bill on Tuesday to enable caregivers to receive a tax credit to offset their costs as the AARP of Nebraska said expenses add up for people caring for sick or elderly family members. So this tax credit will help family members and caregivers deal with financial setbacks. Eligible people will still need to pay out of pocket for things such as home health, doctor visits, and medical supplies. However, officials say they should keep their receipts to be reimbursed when they file their taxes. AARP's State Director of Advocacy, Gina Raglan, said the tax credit can be used for home modifications and the whole concept is to help people live in their homes as long as they can and not have to go to higher levels of care. The credit, which goes into effect in January, will equal about 50% of eligible costs. For more information to see if you qualify, you can visit the Nebraska Department of Revenue's website, revenue.nebraska.gov. Nebraska Game and Parks has announced that free fishing and park entry day is May 18th, and Nebraskans can enjoy activities at state parks without buying a fishing or entry permit for the day. Free Fishing and Park Entry Day is an annual event held on the Saturday ahead of Memorial Day weekend. Camping, lodging, and all other user fees still apply at state parks, and anglers must observe all fishing regulations. Entrance fees for museums at state historical parks and the entrance fee at the SRAM Education Center also will remain in effect. For more information on various activities being held across the state, you can visit the Nebraska Game and Parks website at OutdoorNebraska.gov. 49-year-old Ted Mann has been charged in York County Court with theft by shoplifting more than $5,000 from a York truck stop. According to the arrest affidavit, on Sunday, a York police officer responded to the Petro Travel Station in York after the store's manager reported an employee, Mann, took money from a safe. The affidavit said the manager told the officer Mann was seen on surveillance footage entering the business at around 1 p.m. on Saturday and taking $7,860 in cash, most of which were $20 and $100 bills. 
The manager told the officer man was scheduled to work on Sunday but didn't show up. The affidavit said officers attempted to locate man at a Super 8 hotel in Lincoln, however, were unable to find him. Court records said the hotel registration listed a Kansas address, while his vehicle has an Arizona license plate, and the petrol manager told police man transferred in from Tennessee. A warrant for man's arrest was issued on Wednesday, though he's yet to be arrested. I'll be back with more in just a moment. Firebolt Ag is a full-service fertilizer and chemical retailer. They customize products for individual farmers' needs, with the primary focus being customer profitability. Let Josh and Jack help you get the most out of your farm ground. They also provide in-house marketing with Ron Wall of Flatwater Solutions. Visit Ron in Phillipsburg or call Josh at 785-854-8484 or Jack at 308-840-2819. Firebolt Ag, your leader in agriculture. According to a post on social media from the Waukini Police Department, on Wednesday, April 24th, at approximately 3.40 p.m., members of the Waukini Police Department, the Trigo County Sheriff's Office, the Kansas State Patrol, and the KBI received an arrest warrant for a person living in the 600 block of North 6th Street after the person was supposed to turn himself in after being contacted by the Trigo Sheriff's Office for a court hearing he was involved in. The person failed to do so, so the Waukee Police Department had to act on a felony warrant to get the person into custody. And a plan was devised for when the officers responded to the address, which included law enforcement removing local children in the area before the subject was contacted at his residence. For several minutes, the subject failed to come out of his residence. However, after several knock and announcements from law enforcement, the subject, James Dean Cray, exited out of the back door of the residence where he was placed into custody without further incident. The charges for Mr. Cree include abuse of a child with reckless great bodily harm, abuse of head trauma, permanent disability disfigurement, and domestic battery, knowing or reckless bodily harm to family or person in a dating relationship. And these charges are public information. Mr. Cree is being held in the Trigo County Jail on a one million dollar bond and is considered innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. The Kansas Department of Transportation expects expected to begin work on a resurfacing project on a portion of K-25 in Logan County on April 25th. The project work involves milling and overlaying on 22 miles between 160th Road and the U.S. 40 Junction. Traffic through the areas where crews are actively working will be directed by flaggers and a pilot car and motorists should plan for delays of 15 minutes or less during the daylight hours. The Kansas Department of Transportation expects this work to be completed in late June, conditions permitting. For more information, you can contact the Kansas Department of Transportation Area Construction Manager, Todd Anderson, at 785-953-6011. The Norton County Board of Commissioners reminds the community that the potential for uncontrollable fires exists and they want to prevent the destruction of crop, grass, building, or life. So the Board of Norton County Commissioners has banned open burning. Open burning means any outdoor fire, including but not limited to burning of trash and uncontained and uncovered receptacles, burning of fields, pasture, fence rows and grassland or ditches, campfires, and uncontained warming fires. The resolution will be in effect from the date of its execution until the time as it's modified or rescinded by the Board of Norton County Commissioners. The Board of County Commissioners has declared that it will be unlawful to violate the resolution and that anyone found to be guilty of violating the resolution will be subject to a fine not to exceed $500 or confinement in the county jail not to exceed one month or both. The Norton County Emergency Management wants to remind Norton County residents to sign up for Norton County's Civic Ready Emergency Notification System, which allows residents to receive important emergency notifications regarding tornadoes, severe weather, flooding, critical incidents, amber alerts, boil water advisories, and more. The service is offered free for all Norton County residents, and notifications may be sent by cell phone or landline message, email, or text message. The Civic Ready Emergency Notification System is not automatic. Each person or household is responsible for making sure they're in the Civic Ready database. Signing up is easy. Just go to ks-nortoncounty.civicready.com and enter your contact information. And after you enter your information, you choose the method you prefer to receive your messages. 
It only takes five minutes to sign up, and once you've signed up, you'll then receive important emergency notifications from the Norton County Sheriff's Office. To ensure that your information is accurate, all Norton County residents are encouraged to sign into their account and check their status. Memorial services for Allen Ward, 63 of Norton, will be held at 10.30 a.m. today, Friday, April 26th, at the Plummer Gobber Funeral Home, and interment will follow in the Clayton Cemetery. Memorial contributions may be made to the Allen Ward Memorial Fund and sent in care of Plummer Gobber Funeral Home, 215 West Main Street in Norton. Condolences may be left at plummergobber.com. Your menu today for Eisenhower Elementary School. For lunch, you'll be having chicken and noodles, whipped potatoes, lima beans, strawberry fruit cup, cookie, and milk. And for Norton Community High School and Junior High, your lunch today will be pepperoni pocket, fruit, and milk. I'm Natalie Hadley. Your KQNK News was brought to you by Firebolt Ag, LLC, Farmers Helping Farmers to Succeed. You can contact Firebolt Ag today to get the most out of your farmland. Your KQNK weather forecast is being brought to you by Hinkle Termite and Pest Control, your Norton experts for all of your pest control needs. Your forecast for today, there's a 50% chance of showers and thunderstorms mainly before 5 p.m. Otherwise, it'll be partly sunny with a high near 69 and breezy with a west wind of 10 to 15 miles per hour, increasing to 20 to 25 miles per hour in the afternoon, and the winds could gust as high as 35 miles per hour. For tonight, it should be partly cloudy with a low around 45 and breezy with a west wind of 15 to 20 miles per hour, becoming northwest 5 to 10 miles per hour after midnight, and the winds could gust as high as 30 miles per hour. On Saturday, there's a chance of showers. Then showers are likely and possibly a thunderstorm after 4 p.m. Otherwise, it'll be mostly sunny with a high near 71 and breezy with wind gusts as high as 30 miles per hour Saturday and the chance of precipitation is 60%. On Saturday night, showers and possibly a thunderstorm with a low around 48 and breezy with your chance of precipitation of 80%. On Sunday, showers are likely and possibly a thunderstorm. Should be mostly cloudy with a high near 63 and breezy, with wind gusts as high as 30 miles per hour. And on Sunday night, it should be partly cloudy with a low around 38. I'll be back with the rest of your forecast in just a moment. When you've got dogs, we don't want a nuisance that can be. Lock them out. From Hinkle Termite and Pest Control, Lock em Out is our very effective residential insect prevention program. We'll come to your place and treat your foundation plus all insect entryways. And while we're there, receive a free termite inspection. Call Mr. Rich Wenzel, our certified technician in Norton, at 785-202-0167. That's 202-0167. Continue with your forecast. On Monday, it should be sunny with a high near 74. On Tuesday, sunny with a high near 80. On Wednesday, there's a 20% chance of showers, otherwise mostly sunny with a high near 77. And on Thursday, there's a 30% chance of showers, otherwise it'll be mostly sunny with a high near 73. Currently, with fog, it is 55 degrees. The humidity is 94%. The wind speed is north at 12 miles per hour. The barometric pressure is 29.39. The dew point is 54 degrees. The wind chill is 52 degrees. And the current visibility is one quarter mile. Your weather was brought to you by Hinkle Termite and Pest Control right here in Norton. You can call Hinkle Termite and Pest Control at 785-202-0167 for all of your pest control needs. It is 823 Time is precious. Tens of thousands of people with incurable breast cancer must wait 29 months for federal financial assistance and health coverage. Many won't live that long. They need help now. In less than 30 seconds, you can improve their quality of life. Text the word waiting to 40649 or go to coleman.org slash waiting to send a message to Congress. Tell lawmakers that time is running out for people with terminal breast cancer. Your Kansas Sports Report is being brought to you by United Northwest Federal Credit Union, where everything they do, they do for you. 
Create new memories on your adventures with Visa CU Money Reloadable Prepaid Cards at United Northwest Federal Credit Union. When you're ready for your next adventure, keep it going smoothly with our convenient app to manage your money wherever you are. CU Money Cards are compatible with mobile wallets. Secure and funds are quick and simple to access. Get your Visa CU Money Reloadable Prepaid Card today at United Northwest Federal Credit Union, where everything we do, we do for you. NCUA insured. KIN Sports, I'm Spencer Dupuis. The NFL draft started last night, and the Chiefs were slated to pick 32nd overall, but they traded up and swapped the 32nd, 95th, and 221st picks with the Bills for the 28th pick, 133rd pick, and 248th picks. With the 28th pick, they selected receiver Xavier Worthy out of Texas. Worthy had the fastest recorded 40-yard dash in NFL scouting combine history at 4.21 seconds. The Chiefs are getting a player who can tip the field with speed, and they already know how to use a player like that. GM Brett Veach is excited to pair him with Hollywood Brown. Yeah, just our ability to play vertical and and have speed on the field at all times and having Xavier in, in Hollywood, I, I think, will make life easier for, for Travis and Rasheed. And I, I think, you know, as the season goes on here, I think we'll have a... Um, you know, just uh, an offense that can attack in, in multiple different ways and always keep defenses guessing. Rounds two and three are tonight. They only hold the 64th pick tonight. Rounds four through seven are set for Saturday when they hold five picks. Kansas Information Network Sports. I'm Spencer Dupuy. Help DEA keep our community safe and healthy by participating in National Prescription Drug Take Back Day, Saturday, April 27th. Take action right in your own home by cleaning out your medicine cabinet of unneeded medications. Keep them safe. Clean them out. Take them back. Find a collection site near you at DEATakeBack.com. Do your part to lower overdose deaths and prevent prescription drug misuse before it starts. That's DEATakeBack.com. There's danger out there. It lurks on highways and quiet neighborhood streets. It's more likely to kill you than a shark and more terrifying than the biggest snake. Distracted driving claims lives every day. Every notification, swipe, social post, video, or selfie while driving risks your life. So while you might think public speaking or the zombie apocalypse is scary, what's really terrifying and even deadly is distracted driving. Eyes forward. Don't drive distracted. Brought to you- Norton County Hospital and Medical Clinic offers many services to cater to the health care needs of our community. Whether seeking routine checkups, diagnostic tests, or specialized treatments, patients can rely on us to provide high-quality care tailored to their specific needs. Stay informed about the latest services, programs, and updates by following our Facebook page. We look forward to serving you and your family with excellence and compassion. Getting ready to take on spring? Make your first move with the reliable performance and power of steel battery tools. From hedge trimmers and mowers to string trimmers and more, save on select steel battery tools. Right now, save $50 on the RMA 460V lawnmower battery set. Real steel. Find yours at steeldealers.com. With AK30 battery and AL101 charger. Offer valid for a limited time only while supplies last. See participating dealer for details. Kansas Agriculture Network Markets. Good morning, everyone. I'm Greg Akagi. Right now, let's check the weather. Good morning. We have widely scattered thunderstorms, some of those strong to severe across the state here early on. Two separate storm systems bringing several rounds of thunderstorms to the area through the weekend. Large hail, strong winds, and tornadoes all possible this afternoon in far eastern Kansas. And again, tomorrow, full of multiple rounds of rain, and that may lead to some flooding as well especially Saturday into Saturday night and on Sunday. Sunday, yet again, another round of severe storms possible, then pushing on off to the east of us. For today in northwestern Kansas, showers and a few thunderstorms with a high temperature near 70. North central Kansas, showers and thunderstorms today, windy with a high 75. And in northeastern Kansas, scattered thunderstorms this morning and this afternoon. Some may be severe with a high in the upper 70s. Mostly sunny, low 80s today in the southwestern part of the state. South central Kansas, scattered thunderstorms this morning with a high around 82. And in southeastern Kansas, some severe storms possible today with a high 78. I'm meteorologist Ann Holiday. As we look at the early calls today, first off on the livestock side, of course, cattle futures had a wild day yesterday, pretty wide trade range. The cash market, really one of the biggest keys there, as Kansas had 182 to 183 trade. 184 to 186 in Nebraska, 
and uh, we'll wait and see uh, if anything takes place today or it quiets down because the bulk of the trade took place on Wednesday and a little Thursday in Kansas. Pretty quiet trade as far as the grain market is concerned. Wheat futures down about a quarter to three quarters of a cent. Corn futures about a three cent trade range down about a half to one and a quarter cents. Soybean futures down about four to six cents. You're listening to the markets here on the Kansas Agriculture Network.